rain, rain and more rain. Down at the valley again. And after our uh, Chloe dog trip, we had the squirmy worm, uh, the ecstasy worm tactics under the indicator. We are trying it on a small reservoir. Nice and early, there's no one here on the water. Nice little wind to drift the flies into the bay. So, what we're going to do is cast up and let the flies drift through. Today, using my vision, still maniacs again, seven weight. Did break a fly line in Chloe Dog. It cracked after 10 years or so, if not more, an Airflow 40 plus. One of the first ones that ever came out. That more than paid for itself. Top quality line to last that kind of amount of time. So we've gone for the Airflow 40 plus equivalent again. I'm just going to drift these flies in. fish were deep in Chloe Dog. We were about eight feet down, so what I've done is got the Ecstasy Worm, a six foot, and I got an Andrew Buff Dunn's um, White Nog, about two foot under the bank. And I'm just drifting them into the bank. as it comes towards the end of the drift and I'm just slow figuring away bringing it in. Crack the line on the water. One strip just to tease the fish if there's any there. Keep an eye on that indicator as it's all sinking. One's a white ecstasy worm from Mr. Bafton as well, I'm not sure what he's calling them. Absolute deadly flies. One big benefit is they catch lots of fish. But one disadvantage is they will lose a lot of fish as well. There's a big tail on the bottom and the fish will nip at the tail. But it is something that they will take confidently if they are feeding. So. You know, one or two more casts here now, and the way it's drifting now is taking me in, in the weed. So what I'll do is have a couple more straight in front, and then we lead on up to the pipe there and have a better drift. We are first on the water as well, so a big tip. You don't want to be casting to the horizon. Fish will be in close. They've had plenty of time all morning to build up the courage to come in, feed in between the weeds. Don't be afraid just to drop them in close. Or after you finish retrieving an indicator, just leave it in close. As long as you know there's no weed there, just let it sit there for five minutes. There is fish moving on the, the back bank. The way the forecast of the wind today is screaming over the top of the valley this way. So we're using this to our advantage. We're out of the wind for casting, but there is a slight ripple and movement on the water. So we can fish these fly static. Just let the wind do, do the work for us.
always keep in contact with that fly. As soon as it hits the water, if it doesn't quite fold out nice, just give it a couple of pulls just to tighten everything up. Just keep in contact then as the flies are sinking. There we go, I didn't take long. As soon as I turn the camera off. As soon as I turn the camera off, corrected the line out a little bit further. And we're into our first fish on the ecstasy worm from Mr. Buffett. My setup indicator, Mr. Buffin's nog. Sometimes I'll show you on the, the ecstasy worm now, they take the tail, so trying something without the tail. Two foot under, and then another four feet under that. They do tend to wrap up these flies. Buff Duns, I'll call it an ecstasy worm, and that was second, so let's get back out there, straighten everything up again, put that one back in the same place, it literally took a second, it? that's what I'm doing as well with the wind blowing, floating line, Crack the line back up wind. Keep an eye on that fly. There was a little bite then. That's what I'm doing now with the line staying up wind, I'm actually correcting the line back down, so I'm in full contact with the line at all times now. Another good tip as well, when you're happy that those flies are sunk, and it's a little quiet, nothing's happening. Two, three big sharp pulls brings the flies back up in the water and then they start sinking slowly again where that ecstasy worm really comes into its own where it's just fluttering back down in the water Correct one back up the wind just so it's all straight. Tighten up the line. Just keep an eye on that indicator. It's that initial splash of the fly and it's sinking slowly. The tail will be doing this through the water. So now that my line is holding on some of the weeds as well. So it'll flick the correct 
and everything will start drifting at the same time then. Some nice fish swirling about another 10-15 yards further past my indicator. Fish are starting to wind me up now. <laughs> Jumping all around me. There we go. There we go. There we go. Change the colour, change the location. Ecstasy worm, or four foot under the indicator, or what's it, two foot under the indicator. Ooh. These things don't half hang on. Let's get down there, then get him back. Here we go. Ecstasy worm. Well, more six foot under the indicator. Does it again. See if we can get one again. So that's two fish now. Quite quick. So we'll stay here now and make the most of it. Hopefully there's a few fish there competing for the fly. Or hopefully there's a bigger fish sat just below those smaller ones. And we might tease him up to have a, have a quick easy meal. Lots of fish rising around. Oh, there's a bite, there's a bite. Oh, missed him. Lots and lots of little nibbles on the indicator then. That's what I said earlier on. These ecstasy worms are deadly, but also they do just nip at that tail. So that's my method behind the watts it that's just a little bit above. They're gonna keep pecking, nibbling at the worm. Hopefully if they were to take at the watt set, it'll be a lot more confident take because there's only a small little body at the back of it. So. 
shoot the line out a little bit further. And that is another downfall of fishing at range on an indicator. You will lose a lot of fish as well. Be nice to get into one of the Spartics or Tigers or even a blue trout as well today. My one main target on this water now is a brown. Got to get myself one of those big browns. There's a bite, there's a bite. Here we go, here we go, here we go. There we go. Look at the bow waves out there on that. Hope that's picking that up. out in the net. Now the beautiful Day Valley rainbow trout. Seen fly. fish just seem to be a little, a little further out I think. So we're back out in the same place again. Really really finicky bites. Little tap 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 tap. When you get a confident pull generally when I strike. Sometimes as well, when you lift, you pull the line for a strip strike, as it's called. I will also put fish in the bag for you. So three fish now on that same fly, around six feet down. So it's uh, proven to be very productive. So that's it for today's quick session. The GoPro battery is about to die. We had lots and lots of fish. Thanks again for watching. We'll catch you all in the next one.